one of the funniest cats in the country from New Jersey. Give it up to Kyle Groove. I love hip hop. It feeds my spirit, man. I hope when I die, they play a little hip hop at my funeral and shit. Now they put me in my coffin in the b boy stance. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. I start a season now, you know. My girl starts screaming for help. My kids start freaking out, you know what I mean? They were like, Daddy, I don't like this game. But they say I was in the surgery for six hours, seven hours, and I just slept. I don't know, I just woke up. Before, like, they were trying to give me therapy, and I couldn't do this. I. It was hard for me to, you know, coordinate. I couldn't do this. All right, well, this next story here is no joke. A local stand-up comedian is recovering from a brain tumor. But with the help of doctors at Memorial Regional Hospital, he is standing up against the odds. The situation that he had was very concerning at first, obviously, but we really didn't know. And all the imaging that we had didn't tell us exactly what it was at that point. So it really wasn't until we did the surgery it basically showed that it was a benign lesion. My girl starts screaming for help. Like, can someone help me help my husband? I think he's having a stroke or Section. I appreciate you. I see you, school. <laughs> Could have been anywhere in the world. <laughs> All right, what's up? All right, Miami. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, man. Thank you. Thanks for coming out, man. Thanks for doing it. Thanks for coming to Little Haiti. <laughs> <laughs> Some of y'all like, this is Little Haiti? <laughs> I thought this was North Winwood. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, it will be. <laughs> oh. <Ooh. laughs> Where my Haitians at? See, this is Lil Haiti for real. There's just a little Haitians in here. <laughs> That's what's up. Yeah. So they're gonna have move brothers to the Everglades and shit. <laughs> like y'all like alligator shoes? They out there. Go get them. I remember the first place I came to when I moved to Miami was Liberty City, man. I was like, I was, yeah, I was like nah, it wasn't ooh. <laughs> I heard Brothers Had Liberty. I'm like, I'm gonna go see this. <laughs> yeah, I saw a lot of city, but I didn't see much liberty out there. That's what it's, uh, it's the project, yeah, thanks. Thanks very much. <laughs> Give it up to the city comptroller. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but I love, I love Miami, man. I love it, man. I love this city. They say Miami's gonna be underwater pretty soon, you know? But Miami don't give a fuck. Miami be like, shit, we'll just party on boats. If you don't have a boat, you can't get in. <laughs> You'll have people on life rafts like, I know the DJ. <laughs> I almost died uh, nine months ago. I had a seizure. Had a seizure, and uh, they rushed me to the hospital and uh, found out I had a tumor that was bleeding. They had to perform emergency surgery. And uh, I made it, so I'm grateful. And uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> I 
I'm not telling y'all that for no sympathy or nothing, man. I'm just, I just want to let y'all know if y'all see me shaking, it's not part of my act. <laughs> Please dial 911 <laughs> before you press record. <laughs> <laughs> I know the world we living in. <laughs> Some of y'all wouldn't even help. You'd be like, world star! <laughs> Son of a bitch having a seizure! I'm going to get a million likes. He's going to die. <laughs> Got me shaking on the internet. Shit go viral. You know the shit go viral. They had to remix the shit. Put it to a Jersey house beat. Time for the percolator. It's time for the percolator. Don't do that shit to me, y'all. Uh. Good, you're doing great. You're doing good. <laughs> That's how you feel when you eat apples? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> what are people in love tonight? People in love? People in love? Ooh, two people. This is Miami. Ain't that a bitch? <laughs> and everybody like, eh, okay. Congratulations, man. It's, it's beautiful when it's working, ain't it? No, it's nice. You know, you feel all fluttery inside. You hear birds chirping. <laughs> Let's go see a comedy show. <laughs> I'm gonna get a drink. You gonna drink something? <laughs> but it's very delicate, man. One false move would turn birds into bats. <laughs> you be on your way in here, look at the wrong seat, at the wrong direction. She's like, what you looking over there for? <laughs> I know about love, man. I know about it, man. Because me and my queen, we've been together 22 years, man. 22 years. Yes. We have two beautiful children. Oh, my goodness. Two beautiful children. And uh, yeah, we've been married six months. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we wanted to see if it was going to work out first. You know what I mean? We didn't want the government involved in our situation. Nah, we both like the fact that we could have walked away whenever we wanted. We should get tired of me. She'd be like, bye, I don't need you. I'd be like, Psh, I don't need you. <laughs> hey, what's the Wi-Fi code? <laughs> no Wi-Fi and no wifey, you know? <laughs> it's okay. I don't, I don't think she likes me that much. I don't. I don't. She takes my name out of her phone sometimes. Yeah, because one day I lost my phone, and I needed her phone to call my phone. I'm looking at her phone for my name, but it wasn't in there. But then one day she lost her phone and needed my phone to call her phone. I called the phone. I did. I called it. I picked it up. I was listed as this nigga. Right, and it had the emoji with the glasses and the goofy teeth. <laughs> this nigga. <laughs> I wanted to crack her screen, man. <laughs> we broke up for one year, me and my wife. We couldn't take each other no more, man. It was like, you ever walk across a carpet and get that, that static clinging shit? Uh, you know, we did that and we had tile floors, you know what I mean? Like, we'd sit there, we were literally shooting bolts at each other, like, <laughs> through our fingers. So we just went our separate ways, man. And, uh, you know what kind of, that was some year for me, man. You know how much pussy I got in that year? <laughs> None. <laughs> <laughs> 
Not a sip, not a swallow. Not a swig of vagina. Nah, because I'd been with the same woman for the, at that point for like 10 years, man, 11 or something. I'd be out on dates, didn't even know what to say to other women trying to start conversations and shit. Well, hey, uh, you ever seen the movie Snow Dogs? <laughs> She'd be like, snow dogs? Let me call an Uber. This nigga lame as hell. Because <laughs> my first experience with women, I was a kid. And my older brothers had girlfriends that they'd make cry. But they would always cry to me. Like, why is he doing this? Why is he acting like this? And I'd be like, I don't know. I'm seven. You know what I mean? <laughs> I've not figured this out yet. You know? And I always had a soft spot for women, man, because then when I, and I always said, when I get a girlfriend, I'm never going to make my girlfriend cry until I got one. <laughs> now I realize it's either her or me. <laughs> women remind me of the birds from Avatar, man. Now you can ride them, but they're going to try to kill your ass. <laughs> you be trying to pray, hey, come here, I want to talk to you. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> Chill out. Take it easy. I just want to ride you. <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> okay. My wife tested me. First month, first month we started dating. I took her to a nice restaurant, man, on South Beach. This was back when South Beach was nice. You took your girl there back in the 1900s. It was something to do, you feel me? <laughs> and um, we had a nice dinner, you know. And I went to pay the bill, and she said some slick shit, you know. It was rude, and it was meant to embarrass me. It was so rude that our smooth Italian waiter looked at me like, you gonna let her talk to you like that, bro? <laughs> But I remained a gentleman. I paid the tab. I walked her to the car. And before I opened her door, I spun her around so we were face to face. And I took my glasses off so she could look into my retinas. <laughs> but it took me a minute to focus because my stigmatism was acting up. Well, don't let this Urkel look fool you, motherfucker. <laughs> this is what I do. I'm doing this because I like you. This ain't what I want. I'm saying I ain't a trick. I'm a treat, bitch. You gotta. I mean, that's not what I said, but that's what I felt in my heart. Uh... <laughs> my girl, she really, like, she became my wife during this whole thing. She kept me calm. She's a nurse, so she was able to talk that talk with the with the nursing and the staff. She slept in the bed with me, she cleaned me, she helped feed me, she did everything. Like, when they say uh, you know who someone is when they're tested or when you're tested, I think this was it. Like, this was like, I loved her so much more even after this, like, wow. Like, I'm more patient even with her, more, yeah, understanding it's like, yeah, I will forsake all others <laughs> for this woman, you know? So, yeah. I have two beautiful daughters. My first daughter, her name's Mia. Mia, we named her Mia because me and my wife met in Miami, M-I-A, you know. And my second daughter, her name is Fort Lauderdale because that's where I went to school. <laughs> <laughs> food. Yeah. Oh, man, what's she Jeez. I'm learning a lot being a father, man. I, I didn't know girl babies learned to speak before boy babies. Like when I'm in a playground, my daughters are speaking complete sentences, and the boys are walking around like, uh, duh, duh, duh. <laughs> bumping their heads on the swing, licking the seesaw. And my daughter's like, Father, this child is peculiar. <laughs> Can we go home now, Daddy? I want to watch Bubble Guppies. <laughs> My daughters, man, they something. They daddy me to death, too. Daddy, 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 which feels good, man. You know, really feel, you know it really feels good to have somebody call me daddy, and I'm really their father. <laughs> 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 I 
<laughs> I love being a parent, man. I think it's one of the best things I've experienced in life, man. I think everybody should experience being a parent at some point, especially if you have children, you know what I mean? <laughs> this parent with children messing up for the rest of us, you know? Like, my father died, you know, I got lucky he didn't leave. But, and I know grown people hurt that their parent left. Adults still hurt. My father left me when he was seven. That's right, when he was seven. <laughs> he got on a big wheel and kept on going. And I said, come back, Daddy. That's my big wheel. But the day I had uh, my seizure, it was a beautiful day, man. My wife was off. We, were, we got up early, you know what I mean? Sun was shining. Birds were chirping. Tweet, 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 tweet. Tweet, 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 tweet. Tweet, 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 and my whole family, we eat a plant-based diet, you know? Which is a name I prefer. I don't like the word vegan, man, because vegan sound bitch-ass, you know? <laughs> You're not damn vegan. Vegans sound like a group that should get bullied, <laughs> you know what I mean? You see them eating a broccoli, you got a couple vegans over here, huh? Smack them with a steak. <laughs> See, I prefer plant-based because it makes me feel like I still got some nuts. <laughs> and us being a progressive parents, we said, okay, we're gonna try out this vegan restaurant 14 miles up in Hollywood, Florida. You know, we'll see how that work out. And uh, we got to the vegan spot. And then we got to the counter, and uh, a lot of vegan spots are you pay for the food before they cook it because they want you to know what it costs before they cook it. <laughs> because vegan food can be expensive as hell and we want you to, yeah, we want your money first. Uh, it's like a drug deal. <laughs> Put the money on the counter. I'll come back with your stuff. <laughs> so then it was time to find the seat, you know. The first table had four chairs. It was four of us, perfect, you know. But it wasn't perfect because there was a vent blowing on my wife's forehead, you know? We can't have that. <laughs> no, no. So then it was time to move. Then we found a table that, that was right against the wall. It was like, good, but it only had three chairs. And I was like, oh, no, we can't do that. And my wife was like, no, I'll just sit Fort Lauderdale on my lap. Then we went and found another table that was close to the door that was a table with four chairs, there's four of us, and like the three bears, this table was just right. And we all sat down, I sat down, I took a breath, and I just started short-circuiting. <laughs> and I did not know what was happening to me, man. I knew my heart wasn't hurting, so I didn't think it was a heart attack. I didn't think it was a stroke because, you know, I work out three, four times a week for fun, you know? And I'm in a vegan restaurant, you know? You don't get more healthier than that. <laughs> I said, man, I must be dying. <laughs> I never died before, I didn't know what it felt like. It just felt like somebody hit me with five infinity stones, you know? And, uh, I knew my arm was going numb. I was like, oh man, I gotta, I gotta walk this off. I was trying to shake death off. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> but then someone grabbed me, man, finally, because my wife was screaming for a while because she didn't know. She was like, somebody help, help, somebody help. And then vegans didn't even respond. They was just like, shit. <laughs> Expensive as this vegan food is. <laughs> you better shake your ass to Burger King. Uh, 
get somebody ordering off the dollar menu. <laughs> but finally, somebody grabbed me, and, and I, I said, I'm going to focus on my breathing. I know if I'm breathing, I'm still alive. So I said, I'm going to breathe, breathe, breathe. And I was able to center myself, you know? The paramedics came with their Proud Boy haircuts. <laughs> but I'm like, this is no time to be political. <laughs> and then I took my vegan food to go. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> <laughs> this shit expensive. This is gonna be my last meal. <laughs> Excellent. I got to the hospital, they ran x-rays on me, found that I had a tumor that was bleeding. And uh, I went to the hospital on a Friday. When you go to the hospital on a Friday, it's like getting arrested on a Friday. You ain't seen a judge till Monday, you know what I mean? <laughs> but luckily there was a surgeon on deck, man, who came and he assessed me, man, and dude was smooth, man. He came out with all confidence. He was like, uh, what you have is a, a, a mass and it's, it's a cavernoma and it's hemorrhaging, and we need to perform an emergency craniotomy on you. And he was so smooth, I was like, yeah, let's do it, God damn it. <laughs> I never met this man in my life. <laughs> well, he could have been a janitor dressed in a lab coat. <laughs> I was like, let's go. And it's a good thing I didn't know what any of that shit was. <laughs> But I had a friend come to the hospital who's into like holistic healing and medicine and shit. And he tried to get me to go home and like, man, you need to reassess. If God would have wanted you to have an operation, he'd have put a zipper on your body. I'm like, what? <laughs> He's like, you need to go home and fast. I'm like, shit, fast. If I go home, only thing I'm gonna do fast is die. <laughs> Fuck out of here. Anything on your mind? I just scared him the surgery. So I elected to have the surgery, man, because I was messed up, man. I couldn't speak well. My speech was going, and my, my right arm was, like, almost dead. I couldn't even sign consent in order to, you know, for the surgery. I couldn't even sign the consent form. That's how messed up I was. But uh, nine-hour surgery and went to sleep and didn't feel a thing, man. But yeah, they put me to sleep, man, and, they, and on the same stuff that put Michael Jackson to sleep. That propofol, ooh, that's some good shit, man. <laughs> I slept like a baby, man. They've been slandering Mike's name, but Mike don't give a fuck. He on that propofol. Mike is resting in peace. <laughs> Mike in there like, hee, hee, hee. I'm gonna say, Mama. Good morning, everybody. Today is March 16, 2019. Here at Memorial Regional with Kyle. In the ICU, the neurointensive ICU. I see you halfway dead with a bullet in your head. <laughs> well, I forgot what that ice ice cube song is. But yeah, man, I'm, I, I, I've heard so many stories about people not having it as easy as I had, you know, or complications. It turns out to be malignant instead of benign. and. I was just so thankful, man. I don't have to have any more treatments. Yeah, but I got out of hospital, man. I'm grateful, you know. Till I got that bill. Sure. <laughs> yeah, man, that bill almost gave me a heart attack. <laughs> Shit, and you know what's the sad part is I canceled my health insurance a month before that shit, man. Nah, because, you know, my health insurance, I went to get a procedure. It was too damn expensive. I said, fuck that. I, I'll make it. 
I'll just hold on till Obamacare come through or something, you know? Till the marketplace open back up. Wrong. It was the wrong shit to do, man. I needed help. Grooms does not have health insurance, so his friend created a GoFundMe page raising money for his hefty medical expenses. It even touted donations from some big names in comedy. The stress of, of being sick, right? and being an artist and not knowing where your money is coming from can make you sicker. Mm -hmm. And that's the last thing I wanted for Kyle. I wanted him to have no worries. I wanted his family to have no worries about that. You know, there's no health insurance for comics. So the first thing I asked is, do you have insurance? And when he said he just got rid of it, immediately, that was just my thought. We gotta start a GoFundMe page, that's it. We gotta start this now. Kyle is this, just this humble, kind, sweet person who would never ask anyone for anything because he's always helping other people. So for the first time, you know, he needed help. I didn't start smoking weed till I was 30, man. Yeah, in high school, I was like, if I get high, I'm gonna get high on life. I turned 30, life was like, man, sit your ass down. So, just, you know, fuck as you know. This has been a really humbling experience for me, man. I thank God that I'm alive, you know? I can still be here for my family, my wife, my kids. Man, and the, the love and support that I got from my comedy family, my friends, it's just overwhelming. I feel like I need to make something out of myself now. <laughs> but for now, I'm just gonna continue to do what I do. Do what I love. That's stand-up comedy. Traveling the world and making people laugh. Yeah, I got out of the hospital, man. I was religious for like two weeks. I'd wake up every morning with my Pandora on the gospel station. Just another day, my Lord has kept me here. Yes, it did. Just another day that I've been in my Savior's care. I want to say he threw, he threw his loving arms all around me. Yes, he did. And there I found, I found peace and joy in there. Oh, thank you. Some of y'all appreciate it. Some of y'all like, karaoke night is next week. <laughs> welcome to my section. Welcome to my section. I'm glad you arrived at my section. Welcome to my section. Welcome to my section. I'm glad you arrived at my section. I appreciate you. I see you school. <laughs> Could have been anywhere in the world if you chose to be with me. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you guys uh, for coming. Uh, I want to acknowledge a very special guest tonight. Uh, this guy, shit, he's the reason I'm still here today to perform for you motherfuckers. It's my surgeon, uh, Dr. Burkett. Let's give it up for Dr. Clinton Burkett. Stand up and take a bow, man. Look at him, look at him, look at him. Look, look at these hands. Look at him, look at him. <laughs> these hands are lifesavers, y'all. Look at him. So I'm telling y'all, he did a wonderful job. If any of you guys ever need brain surgery. <laughs> <laughs>